Our first guest has ascended the peak of culinary excellence to become one of Vancouver's celebrity chefs at the Four Seasons Hotel and New Restaurant. Now, just this week, he won another recognition for the Vancouver Magazine Restaurant Awards for the green category. A chef is keenly aware of where our food comes from and how our earth, our, our, our food choices are affected and affect our earth and the food from whence it comes. So he started Chefs for Oceans and last year rode his bike 8,700 kilometers over Canada meeting our country's greatest chefs. And he met them about the importance of healthy lakes, rivers, and oceans. So please welcome Ned Bell. As Sam so graciously introduced me, first of all, a quick thank you to Sam and to Lynn for inviting me to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Ned Bell, as uh, he mentioned. I'm the executive chef of the Four Seasons Hotel here in Vancouver, and also you, Seafood and Bar. I have put on a couple of pounds since riding across Canada, uh, but I am still here to passionately support and speak on something that I live and breathe every day. I was born in the Okanagan in, uh, in Penticton, actually, in the early 70s. My dad was the first hydroponic tomato farmer in the Okanagan. Um, I'm pretty sure he was growing other things hydroponically. <laughs> My name is Ned, after all. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. I know we only have seven minutes, so we won't get too deep into the, uh, to that conversation. But you know, <clears throat> I'm one of the lucky ones. I knew what I wanted to do at a very young age. I uh, started washing dishes here at the Avenue Grill in Caresdale when I was 14, and I fell in love with the food business, the people business, immediately. Uh, I'm an artist. At the end of the day, I love to present my art, and I love to feed people. More importantly, I love to connect people. And then, you know, we're about to celebrate 10 years of the OceanWise program, just this year, 10 years. Sea Choice, uh, another phenomenal program that started around the same time. And you think about sustainability or sustainable seafood, that those programs are less than 10 years old. Sort of an extraordinary thought. But I went to culinary school here. I did my apprenticeship at Le Crocodile. I, went to, I worked in Lumiere. We opened Lumiere in 1995. You know, very, very lucky that I worked with the best from the beginning of my career. And again, I said how fortunate I am. I, I truly believe I am one of the lucky ones. I love what I do every single day. I get to feed you. I feed arguably about 350,000 people a year through my hotel. And you know, I feel a responsibility in how I feed you. And I recognize that my peer group has a responsibility and or an opportunity, however you want to look at it, to feed people properly. You know, I, I like to say that if I make something tasty and I put it in your belly, you're probably going to like me. <laughs> right? And if you like me, you're probably going to listen to my message. And my message is healthy lakes, oceans, and rivers. My message is sustainable seafood. Now, who in this room knows what sustainable seafood means? I can't see that well. <laughs> a couple hundred people, a couple of hands. Let's say a couple dozen hands. I, I get it. I know. It's a gray area. What does it mean? It's a big ocean out there. There's seven of them. Right? We're surrounded by three of them in Canada. Aren't we lucky to live in this extraordinary country? 91% of Canadians believe, WWF did a study years ago, tested Canadians, asked Canadians more, more correctly, you know, is it important where their seafood comes from? And 91% of you believe it is. But the truth is, none of us really know what the hell sustainable seafood means. Right? It's a gray area. It's a big ocean. Well, here I'm going to give you a quick 
sustainable seafood lesson. Sustainable seafood is seafood that comes from wild, well-managed fisheries and responsible aquaculture. But we'll get back to the aquaculture point in a second. For me, wild, well-managed fisheries. Well, what was the season that just started a couple weeks ago? Halibut. Wild fish. Right? Where's this guy from? The West Coast. I hope you know what this is. <laughs> you probably eat a lot of it. You might not know what this is. You know why? Because we overfished it. Back in the 90s when the fisheries collapsed for cod in Newfoundland, 25% of the population was unemployed like that. Now, the cod fishery is coming back slowly. Slowly. We still don't get to eat it as much as we once used to. But we still have this guy that we love and look forward to. We're not quite sure why he comes back all the time, sometimes more, sometimes less, but we're learning. Marine biology and scientific research is incredibly important for me as a chef because the people that are doing that work go into the programs that support OceanWise and Sea Choice. So wild, well-managed fisheries. I can catch halibut between this time and this time, and I can only catch this much. That's a wild, well-managed fishery. Depending on how they catch it and where they catch it, that's a sustainable fishery. Aquaculture, quickly. Farmed fish does not, I should go back, farmed fish is not a four-letter word. Two-thirds of the seafood that you consume today is farmed. You might not know that. But here's a sort of good way to understand it. We don't eat wild chicken. We don't eat wild pigs. We don't eat wild beef. We eat farmed animals. Now, we can have that discussion some other time, but aquaculture is the only way that we will feed potentially 9 billion people by 2050. Responsible aquaculture. Good fish farming. Land-based, closed containment fish farming. We are so fortunate here on the West Coast to have a project up that's led by the Namgis First Nations in Port McNeil, Port Hardy, called the Kutera Fish Farm. And they're doing closed containment land-based aquaculture for salmon. Pretty spectacular. So wild, well-managed fisheries and closed containment land-based responsible aquaculture. Did you know that oysters, clams, and mussels are farmed? Anyway, Chefs for Oceans, I want to engage my peers. How do I do that? Through your bellies. I want to engage my peer group through how we feed you. I'll leave you with a really quick story. My little boy, Max, we were on a flight. We get to fly neat places. Max, we're about to land the plane. He's four years old at the time. I don't preach to my kid. He looks at me and he says, I have three boys, or will shortly. My wife is pregnant. Daddy, what's your favorite fish in the ocean that we're allowed to eat? He's four years old. His generation will get it. Thank you very much.